Welcome to Wooloo High School's English Rules, where we look at what our students are learning in the classroom at the moment. Year 11 started term three with a close study of text, focusing on Robert Frost's poetry. Last week, we analyzed the poem, Nothing Gold Can Stay. And this week, we're looking at his poem called Mending Wall. And again, can I just emphasize that Robert Frost's poetry deceptively looks simple. Yes, in this poem, Mending Wall, it seems like it's two farmers going on their annual walk along their boundary fence and mend the wall, in other words, repair the wall. But let's put a bit of context in this. When Robert Frost was writing his poetry, the world, as in East-West relations, were walled up with the most famous wall being the Berlin Wall, separating East Berlin and West Berlin. And of course, the Iron Curtain, okay, separating again Eastern Europe with Western Europe. So when reading the poem, please bear that in mind that yes, it is two farmers walking their boundary and trying to repair their wall. But don't forget, that Robert Frost recited this poem to the General Secretary of the USSR at the time, okay, in 1961 or 1962, okay, and maybe that was his message to the USSR. What is the point of walls? This is a much longer poem. I'm not going to read it all, but I'm just going to look at some of the important ideas and trying to justify these ideas with some of the great quotes in the actual poem. So let's start Robert Frost's poem, Mending Wall. I really enjoy the opening line of the poem, something there is that doesn't love a wall. And this is later repeated in the poem, so this repetition highlights this mysterious force that does not love walls. And this mysterious force is none other than nature itself. Is Frost saying it is unnatural for us to have walls? As walls symbolize barriers, barriers to human contact and relationships. And this mystery is further reinforced by the high modality word no one, in no one has seen them made or heard them made. And this symbolic significance of walls as barriers to human relations is highlighted when the persona and the neighbor walk along the boundary line, each on their side of their respective properties, and set the wall between us once again. We keep the wall between us as we go. So this wall sets neighbors apart. They lack any warm relationship beyond this annual ritual of mending their shared wall. Notice his neighbor has no name. The poet addresses him in the third person, representing this lack or non-existent relationship between them. Their lacking relationship goes beyond the distance constructed by the wall. They only pick up the stones on their side of the fence, whether they are huge boulders or metaphorical loaves and balls. They stick to their own. They do not help each other. Isn't it a huge stereotype or an ideal for neighbours to help each other? Yet these neighbours do not have any humanity between them and their relationship is non-existent. The poet's belief in the irrelevance of walls comes up also. There where it is, we do not need a wall. And his deduction, he's all pine and I am apple orchard. And there is also a subtle ridicule. My apple trees will never go across and eat cones under his pines is contrasted to the easily accessible cliched by the neighbour, good fences make good neighbours, which he repeats twice to show how fixed he is to this idea that fences keep people apart and maintain relationships with inverted commas. And what he believes is a good relationship. And more importantly, the repetition shows, especially at the end of the poem, that he will not budge. He will never change. One of the most important lines in the poem is actually quite paradoxical. 
before I build a wall, I'd like to know what I'm walling in or walling out. Yes, walls keep people out, but do walls also keep people in? What is it that makes people decide to remain behind their wall and keep themselves apart from the world? Notice the way the persona describes his neighbour with a simile like an old stone savage armed to depict his crippling conservative values. He is more than conservative. He is backward. And we can imagine him as some kind of Neanderthal holding these stones. And his backwardness is reinforced by the symbolism of darkness as he moves in darkness as it seems to me. And the persona is pointing out his neighbor's ignorance he will not change and that's the way the poem ends with that same cliche of good fences make good neighbors so the title is quite ironic here we have the persona who's against the walls but he still meets up with his neighbor once a year to mend the wall if he was so against the wall he would have let it fall apart and yet he mends the wall probably because this is the only chance that he has a connection with the neighbour. There is no other connection. Even if they are so different as individuals, even if they have different origin and values, this annual ritual is the only contact he seems to have with his neighbour. And the persona suddenly tries to persuade him about the irrelevance of defences and you know, the unnatural barrier that they represent. But unfortunately, the neighbor just will not budge. He will not change his mind. So it is really a powerful poem about walls acting as barriers in our human interaction and human relationships. Yes, it seemed quite easy. The two farmers just walking the line and mending their wall, their shared wall that is. But there was so much more to this poem. I hope I've given you some kind of idea about this allegory that yes, it is a very simple experience, but it signifies something much greater. So hopefully I'll see you next, uh, next time when we do the next poem. But yes, this is year 11 with Robert Frost Poetry and today's episode on Mending Wall. See you soon.